everyone, Brody here with our new channel, Let's Table It, where we get games to the table. I have a copy of Maple Valley to unbox for you today. If you are unsure how the game plays, I would recommend my preview video on the Meeple Mountain channel. There you can learn how to play the game and see how the game works. Here I will try to explain some of the game, but again, that video will show you more of the details. This is a game for one to five players and takes about an hour to an hour and a half to play. So it's the first day of spring and the critters of Maple Valley are preparing for the annual spring festival. While the adults prepare the village, the local children are tasked with searching the woodlands for the ingredients needed to make a dazzling variety of party favors that work well together and make sure that the festivities are ready to go by the time dusk arrives. Your goal is to be the critter who brings the most joy to the festival. You will achieve your score mainly by completing favors, especially ones that combine well for fun activities or that feature other bonus scoring. You will bring each completed favor to a specific festivity. The more you supply to a particular festivity, the more you'll score. Points can also be earned by assembling a large group of friends, by collecting skill-boosting patches, and from your stash of leftover resources. There are plenty of ways to make the festival very special. The game includes one game board, seven sun tiles, five pack player mats, 72 favor cards, seven festivity cards, six outpost cards, 40 patch cards, 36 friend cards, five starter friend cards, five critter pawns, 50 player cubes, which are changed to paw prints in this version. One first player worm token. This version has the upgraded wooden version. Because, you know, the early bird gets the worm. 12 dottle cards. 20 map tiles upgraded to the wooden ones in this version. 13 grove tokens. 6 curiosity sites. 126 good markers, which again are wooden in this version. 54 Curiosity markers, wooden in this version, and 12 multiplier planks. During your turn, which happens in a clockwise direction, players start their turn by playing either a friend card that's in their pack or a dawdle card when they receive one as they won't start the game with dawdle cards but might gain them throughout the game. If using a friend card, you will then move along the trails on the board using the type of travel method from the friend card that you chose to play. You then activate your location and do the things your new location does. And the last step you will do is you will spend your resources to make favors, which you will then assign to the different festivities. If you place the final cube on a festivity, then you will trigger its event. There are patch powers and friend abilities, which can be used as described during your turn as well. Players will continue doing this, and then when the round ends, which is after you use all of your cards, then the sun track is advanced, the favor, patch, and friend displays are cycled through, all players gather their tired friends and clear cubes off their patches. Players with fewer friends draw dottles to match the leader's hand size, the worm token is then passed clockwise, and a new round begins. Scoring is done at the end of the game where you score your favors plus any of their bonuses. Your friend score points is marked on those cards. Your patches score points as marked on them with possible bonus scoring. Leftover resources that include map and honey gain you a point while a group of three of other resources gain you one point per grouping. Then the most cubes on each festivity will score points. The most will score four points plus one point per cube. And the second most scores two points plus one point per cube. And all others have one point per cube. This is a continuation of the Creature Comforts universe, which should continue to make more games within this world, I hope. In the game, you can choose to play as a yellow bunny, a blue porcupine, a gray raccoon, a red fox, or a purple squirrel. I usually play as the green player in most games, but since this one doesn't have a green player, I play Gray, the raccoon. My daughter usually is the yellow bunny, my son is the red fox, and my wife plays as the purple squirrel. So, poor, poor porcupine. 
You will meet friends like the flying squirrel, the stoat, the wood frog, the white-tailed deer, the chipmunk, the Canada lynx, the blue-spotted salamander, the star-nosed mole, the woodchuck, the black bear, the striped skunk, the eastern red bat, the eastern newt, the muskrat, the painted turtle, the American beaver, the river otter, the moose, the black-capped chickadee, the red-tailed hawk, the belted kingfisher, the green-blue heron, and the ruby-throated hummingbird. Some of those friends are found in the Feathered Friends mini-expansion, and there's also a raven pawn for the roaming raven mini-expansion as well. Did you know a study done in the U.S., but is probably accurate around the world, but it showed 61% of adults in the U.S. say that having close friends is essential to living a fulfilling life, and that's more than those who cited marriage, children, or money. A slim majority of adults surveyed, 53% said they have between one to four close friends. 38% said they had about five or more. About 8% said they had no close friends, and that adds up with some experts are describing an epidemic of loneliness for some. I know this is an advanced kids game, but I also know a lot of adults will be playing this as well, so I hope this game brings friends together. And you should invite someone new to play a game with you. This might be someone that you just met or someone that you know, and it's been a long time since you've gotten together with them. But again, this is Brody with Let's Table It, where we get games to the table. Please like and subscribe to our channel. We are new and working hard to bring to you videos like this one so that you know if these games are ones that you want to get to your own table.